For joining us on the uh, Nigeria bomb blast and its implications for WEF on Africa, in two weeks' time, we join in studio now by Martin Davy, CEO of Frontier Advisory. Martin, thanks for joining us Thank today. You. Thank I actually you. want us to go back to a similar situation which unfolded in Kenya with the Westgate attacks, the bomb blast that took place there. You were there. In fact, you, you actually there. went I'm back after the bomb blast. Mm. And uh, mm. uh, the way the government handled that situation? Mm. Well, it's interesting. I, I was in Nairobi in, in last year, September, I think it was. and uh, and. Uh, you know what I was. What shocked me. Well, obviously, the events were incredibly shocking and uh, and tragic. But beyond that was how the government responded to it or lack of response. I think in particular cases, in, in Kenya's case, the government and Nigeria's case, perhaps as well, need to need to approach security, domestic security, with far greater seriousness. Uh, whether it's uh, as Matalo is correctly saying, whether it's so-called sort of hard targets or soft targets, regardless, it's only now seemingly that because the attack has taken place, this attack uh, today, uh, this morning, um, in and around Abuja, leading up to World Economic Forum, all of a sudden, us are now suddenly concerned. These attacks have been going on for 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 a few years now. I believe even in the case of um, of Boko Haram, that over 200 schools have been torched in recent months in Nigeria as well. So this is an ongoing. Uh, onslaught on the state by people who don't, don't clearly even believe in the nation state. But going back to the, Niger the, the, the Kenya situation, uh, as, you, as, you, as you said, it wasn't, didn't get out too much in terms of news, but subsequent to that Westgate attack, there was an also an attempted attack on the airport uh, a few weeks afterwards. Uh, and, uh, you know, and why, do, do why do governments in this part of the world largely often do not take the necessary corrective steps to counter such, such acts of absolute terrorism but and violence. But how do you, Martin? I mean, certainly on Twitter, and it, the mm. social media is full of exactly mm. what happened uh, in Abuja. Mm. Four guys were in a golf, a Volkswagen golf. They mm. parked it in a very busy area where people were catching buses. They left, mm. and the bomb went off. How do you, as a government, uh, short of mm. cordoning off every uh, area where lots of people are together, how do you address mm. that? I think like in that case it's almost impossible, as I said, and you know, maybe I'm being too harsh in my criticism, but at the same time I believe a lot of the, the reaction of the Nigerian military to many of the Boko Haram sort of situations is, 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 is equally bad as well, has not been dealt with properly. Uh, as, as Colin Coleman was saying earlier, yes, need a rule of law, less needs to be applied equally to all. But at the same time, a professionalization and professional response by, by, by the state itself also needs to be in place. You deal in frontier markets, that's your speciality. Is this going to change perceptions towards Nigeria now that it is such a high profile? We'll get to WEF in just a moment, mm, but mm, mm. does this happen in various parts of the world and mm. do investors, uh, as Colin was saying, see through it and they invest anyway, knowing that at some point in time it'll pass? I think more the latter. Companies tend to have a relatively short memory. Uh, examples such as the India, um, Mumbai bombings a couple of a few years ago now. Uh, Bali bombings, Indonesia. Again, similarly, very complex political economies, very heterogeneous, a lot of internal tensions. I mean, a year, two years later, these bombings were practically, these acts of terrorism were, were practically forgotten about. I think what, we've, what we often forget, and, and, and fortunately we tend to be superficial, generally speaking, is, is people look at these big, populous, complex emerging markets purely as an FMCG play. And if you can sell products, uh, you can sell goods or whatever it may be, and uh, or do business or finance in these economies, it comes down to the bottom line, I'm afraid. And, uh, and so it's quite it's cynical. It is. You it send is your afraid. disposable staff, perhaps, not your CEO there, mm. Mm. and they go and live in, in a, in a hellhole. Mm. I suppose like a South Africa under apartheid. Not too dissimilar, uh, I'm afraid. It it's ultimately comes down to business and therefore perhaps is, is somewhat superficial. So uh, unless, uh, interesting to see what happens in the next week or two, typically these sort of attacks we even saw in Kenya, as, as you alluded to and as you mentioned, it's, it's, they don't come in a single attack. There's maybe a second or a third sort of phase planned as well in almost goading the government to say, well, where's your response? So this will be leading up in and around Abuja, perhaps elsewhere in the country. Are you still going to where? I'm booked to go to, to World Economic Forum, uh, as per usual, to the Africa Summit, and uh, we're obviously doing some work there as well. So, so hopefully things, uh, things get, gain on, get under control. Um, what Tyler, speaking from London, was saying about sort of, you know, maybe more strategic assets being protected, airports, hotels, etc. Mm -hmm. But of course it's concerning. It has to be. So as things stand right now, yes, we'll be going. And, um, but of course we have to reassess the situation closer to the time. We wish you a safe trip and a safe return. In Most importantly, thank you very much. Well, that was Martin Davies, CEO of uh, Frontier Advisory.